Welcome to Casebag Watches, my name is Tim and today's topic is the Omega Geneve. But why the Geneve? Well, it's because it's my first appearance here on YouTube. I feel the duty to contribute something useful and I think the Omega Geneve is the first, is the perfect first watch when it comes to vintage watches. It's affordable, it's um, available in many on many marketplaces and it's very easy to understand. You don't need that high education as a watch collector to wear a Omega Geneve with some enjoyment. But let me ask you one question. What do you think? Why is the Geneve such a popular piece nowadays? Because it's a fair simple watch. Three hand watch, date function, um, nothing special at the first glance, but it's an, it's an real icon right now and I think it's a little bit like a popular comic book in fact this one I don't know if you're familiar with the work um, of Hergé he was very famous for inventing uh, Tintin and Milu of course and the, whole, uh, the, the other characters but he was also very famous for inventing the Lean Claire this style of drawing things like they are very precise um, without decorations, without any vagueness, without mist, and with plenty of room for imagination, for identification with the subject. And I think that's one of the secrets of the Omega Genie. By the way, um, right now I'm wearing um, another watch. It's a little bit odd if you're talking about the Omega Genie, why um, you have another watch on your wrist and I'm wearing I don't know if you can see this, an old Rolex date just from the 80s. I love it pretty much, but um, I love the Geneve as well pretty much, but that's new because um, DHL has lost mine. Yes, DHL has lost my first watch I've lost um, in, that, in that direction. Um, okay, I have, to, uh, I have to admit it, I sold the watch, I sold the watch, stupid move. Sold it to a, a gentleman in, in the UK, shipped it, I checked the, the tracking, the DHL tracking, a few days later and I saw madness, chaos, chaos, watch gone. And um, yeah, and then I felt, uh, I suffered seller's remorse and I've had some trouble with, uh, with the buyer obviously. Uh, very disappointed, ridiculous situation for both of both of us and I will receive in a few weeks um, by the way this is six weeks ago so I think we can assume the watch is gone with the, with the criminal or in the tr trash or whatever and I think two weeks more and I will get the, the money from the insurance company but of course the watch is gone and the money is not worth the trouble I'm I'm facing right now yeah and I take this as a, as a uh, a hint from heaven, buy yourself another one. Sometimes it works that way, right? Um, you have to, to lose something to appreciate it. And the watch I've sold, it wasn't my first Geneve. I've owned some over the years and I've learned m very much about the models, about the market, the traps, the weak points. Um, because I think at the end it's like a vintage car and we all know vintage cars can cause big 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 trouble repair costs sunken costs hidden damages all sort of crap and um, but i think in, in case of the geneve i'm able to buy a decent one for myself this time a keeper i promise and yeah the idea the idea of this video is to share my experiences my experiences from the past buying geneves um letting them fixed and um, and I will show you everything in detail. That's the plan with reference numbers and informations about near to every part. You can begin with the dial or the crystal up to the to the clasp. And I promise at the end of this video you will be able to pick up a decent genie for yourself without trouble, without bad surprises. Okay, nothing more to say. Right now, then let's go into detail. Okay, and now we're seeing um, the model 
which in my opinion is the, the model to go. You see the reference number and you can see right now why I've made that comparison between the Genève and the Lean Claire by Hergé. Everything here is totally without decoration except that that nice champagne dial of course but if you see the indices the hands the date this is very functional and at the same time it is it has some beauty in it and i think this is very important that's one of the reason because uh, why the geneva is such a popular watch nowadays but let's talk a little bit more about the the iconic potential of the watch i don't know if you're familiar with that kind of dictionaries, dictionaries which provide images together with a certain word. Um, for example, you have there uh, a fruit like watermelon, a very typical rich red vo uh, watermelon, and next to it you have the, the word in a foreign language, so you can memorize the, the fruit together with the word, and sometimes it can be very, very easy to pick up a new vocabulary with this method. And I think if you want to memorize the word watch, wristwatch in a foreign language, then you could take the genie for the job. I think it fits perfectly. It's easy to understand. It's easy to recognize. You, um, you will notice at first glance that this is a wristwatch. Easy to memorize. I think you could draw the, the dial after looking at it for a few seconds. But it's not... Um, it's not ugly in a technical way, like a screwdriver or, um, or a hammer. Okay, the dimensions. Um, the diameter of this particular watch is 35 millimeters. This seems small, but um, you may notice there's no bezel. So the dial has plenty of room and the entire watch wears bigger than, than 35 mil. But I think we all can agree um, that this isn't the watch for an audience, this isn't the watch for showing off, but it's a, it's a nice timepiece um, for yourself, nobody will, will notice it. And sometimes I personally find this quite good. Let's talk about the crystal. Um, generally it's plexiglass, it's very easy to scratch the, uh, that, that type of crystal, it's very easy to polish it. If you're a lucky one, then your Genève um, shows a tiny Omega sign in the center of the uh, of the of the crystal, and which means it's uh, it's a signature, it's original. If you don't find it, it's not the end of the world, I guess. Um, then you have a generic crystal, and I doubt that there's any difference in material between a generic and a Omega crystal. All right, dial. Um, as I mentioned, the dial is very puristic, very clean and very beautiful, um, so I wouldn't accept anything uh, than perfect condition here. I would avoid any sort of patina, which is water damage, and I think you don't, um, you don't want to have a puristic watch with some distraction by damage. It's also important to keep in mind that patina can grow. It's like rust, it won't stop, and with some bad luck, the nice patina can turn very easily into pretty nasty patina. Same thing in my opinion um, with the hands. If there are some pieces of aluminum missing in action, that's not a drama in my opinion. Your watchmaker can replace loom, but then you have to be prepared that he will substitute it with a modern material and not with the original tritium, which can be a negative for uh, serious collectors, but I think um, Better there's modern loom than old loom in the movement because there you have the date window and parts of old material can easily easily affect the movement. Next topic is the case. The case of a Geneva is a very simple thing. Um, generally it comes without any de decorations and uh, without different types of finishing. You can see um, overpolished ones, of course, because there are some edges and edges catch scratches. And so there are some overpolished genies on the market. Which amount of polishing is acceptable? Well, I think that's a matter of taste or a matter of the, uh, the purpose of the watch. If you want to buy a Genève just for the safe, just for your collection, and if you don't want to wear the piece, 
then I think you should go for an unpolished unpolished one but if you're planning to wear it and I, th I think that's the, <laughs> that's um, the way to go then again it's not the end of the world if if the edges are a little bit rounded the next part is the crown and let's keep this short I wouldn't accept anything than an original crown because it shows the perfect dimensions for the watch and a crown without an Omega sign is always an indicator for a workshop without access to original parts so it could be an, an indicator for some well for a Franken watch or at least for some sloppy work there so don't accept anything that the original crown. Next topic is the case back and um, the case back is a little disappointing I must say. On for example on the Omega Genie, uh, on the Omega Seamaster excuse me on the Seamaster you have that 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 horse on the case back. The Omega Constellation comes with that nice observation tower mostly in made out of gold and here in this case Omega Genie it's blank it's blank brushed brushed and blank um, some people say well that has to be a replacement part without any branding but you will find the brand and the reference number on the inside of the case pack very easily or very easily ha huh? maybe not very easily because the old rubber that Omega um, used in the in the 60s and 70s they have the tendencies to turn into something really like glue and sometimes you will need brute force to open open the case back of a Omega Genève and I would leave this to your watchmaker. And of course you can find on many Genevs um, those, those nasty scratches, always an indicator for brute force on the watch, never a good sign. Okay, inner values, the movements. If we are talking about Omega Genies from the 60s and 70s, we're talking about um, the 500 series, which is this, 565 for example, and the 1000 series. The 500 series is um, well respected, good reputation, um, known as very accurate, very, very um, well made, very robust, reliable, beautiful. We see that, that golden rotor, very, very beautiful piece. And another um, very important advantage nowadays is that um, many independent watchmakers can service a 565, for example. They can service it with original parts because there are NOS parts available, which means new old stock. If you pick up an Omega Genie from the late 60s or the 70s, then maybe you will find in it a, a more modern movement, the 1000 series. They have quite a bad reputation, uh, not bad, but um, a weaker reputation. I've spoken with two watchmakers about the topic. One told me, well, stay away from it. Very hard, very hard to, um, to service, very complicated to repair. In fact, he refused to do some repairs on one. I think it was a, a 1030. Yeah, he refused. The other guy told me, well, good movements. Very reliable, very um, very precise as well. Yes, a little bit um, a little bit complicated, but no big deal. You can repair them, you can service them. So I guess if you like the watch, but it comes with a thousand series movement, then you have to talk to your watchmaker. Maybe you have to find another watchmaker. Okay, back to the five six five. I've mentioned weak points, and there is one I guess, and that's the date function. The date function tends to be um, tends to be broken actually. So if you see a Geneve, if you find a Geneve on eBay or Chrono24 and the seller is a private private person, and then you have to ask him. You have to ask him, is the quick set working? Is the date function working flawless or not? If not, um, as I mentioned, there are parts available, but it could take weeks to organize them, um, even for a, for a specialized watchmaker. Um, my watchmaker calls this acquisition crime, so I think there are some dark channels um, he's using for this for this sort of acquisitions. Another strong point of the movement is its capability to be regulated. If you have picked up a Geneve and it shows bad performance, often this is not a sign for a service in need. 
and every watchmaker can regulate the 565 very easily, very affordable. So don't panic when the watch comes out of the box and uh, gains minutes or, or loses minutes. One thing very important to know and very pleasant to know is um, if you're planning to buy an Omega Genif, you are not in great danger to buy a fake because there are very few fakes in this in this segment. We're talking here a, a very affordable watch and I think manufacturing a copy isn't worth it, isn't worth it for the criminal. If you were able to fake a watch with all details, with the movement, with the correct dimensions, with the correct materials, then you don't do it on a Genève, then you do it on a, on a Rolex Datejust. And so in my opinion it's not important if the watch comes with box and papers. In fact, I've never seen uh, Omega with, with the correct box, with a box, of course, yes, that's possible, but, but with the original box and the papers, never, never ever. We have to keep in mind that the Omega Genève wasn't introduced as a luxury piece. On the contrary, it was introduced as an um, everyday watch. Affordable, long-lasting, um, but surely nobody in the 60s saw the Omega Genève as an investment like it is nowadays. So there was no reason to keep every bit of paper. Okay, another important point um, to discuss is the price, the price, the value, and I said several times affordable, but what does it mean? Affordable, and that's a little bit hard because we all know that prices are very flexible with wristwatches. So all I can do is to give you some some rough numbers here, and but please don't don't take it for granted. I'm talking right now from April in 2018, and maybe the situation in six months is quite different. My first Genève I picked up on eBay with full risk, bad images, private seller for about 220 euros. Very, very cheap, impossible right now. Right now, a Genève on eBay costs between, let's say, 300 and 400 euros in a fair condition. If you buy them on Chrono, you can easily pay double. And of course, you can find some listed Genevs with prices uh, like 2000 US dollars. And in my opinion, this is bullshit. It's waiting for the fool, but in the times of the internet, um, where everybody can compare prices, I think it's ridiculous. Important to know here is um, that servicing a Genève with, together with Amiga, by Omega is near to impossible in a, in a reasonable economic way. They will charge you, I think, over 1000 euro for a full service. So you have to find yourself an independent watchmaker and they are there, you can find them. They have access to original parts, not all of them, but they practice that acquisitional crime and some of them are quite good in it. And as a result, you can have a full service on your Omega Genie for about 350 euros in Europe, obviously. Okay, that's all I can say right now about the Omega Genève. I hope I did something useful here. I hope you, you've enjoyed the video and if you're successful, if you're buying yourself a nice vintage watch, please let me know. And maybe until next time. <laughs>